to something like that for the Trump family, and thank God we didn't. Uh, joining us now is a great friend of Newsmax, the CEO of the Republican Jewish Coalition, Matt Brooks. Matt, first of all, welcome to N2. Great to be with you. Um, talk about what you've been seeing here at the convention. I know you spoke, uh, obviously, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is front of mind. We talked last night about the Israeli hostages and American hostages, by the way, who are still there. And there's a feeling that Joe Biden's weaknesses around the world have been exposed. Well, Ed, you know, one, for me, one of the big takeaways from uh, this convention is how, uh, in stark contrast, the Republican convention is going to stand to the Democratic convention. I was honored and humbled to be able to uh, ask by President Trump and, and by the RNC to address the convention. And when I asked everybody to cheer if they support Israel, the 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 hall just exploded in, in cheers, and there are people here waving Israeli flags and, uh, uh, you know, showing their support for Israel, that, you know, who aren't Jewish. Uh, the, the parts of the program about anti-Semitism, about what's going on in the college campuses, about the hostages that are being held, uh, none of that's going to happen in Chicago in the Democrats' convention. As I said in my speech, uh, there is only one pro-Israel party right now, sadly, uh, and that is uh, the Republican Party. So why do so many Democrats still seem to support the Democrat ticket? We don't even know what the ticket will wind up being. We'll get to Joe Biden in a minute. But their votes, their money... Um, campaign donations, and Donald Trump talks about this all the time. He says, I was Israel's best friend when I was in office. Yep. So every time I see him, he asks me, how come the Jews don't support me? And I, and I sort of explained to him, I said, Mr. President, first of all, you have to understand some context. Uh, you got in 2020, uh, you have to go back, in 2020, the share of the Jewish vote you got was 33%. You have to go back to Ronald Reagan in 1980 to see a Republican who got that strong uh, a vote. But what I said to him, I said, more importantly beyond that, because the national exit poll numbers distort uh, the reality because it, it overweights in places like New York and New Jersey and California, which are very liberal. But I said, in the places that matter, in the critical battleground states that help elect you, in Florida, uh, he got 44% of the Jewish vote. Mm. In Georgia, he got 50% of the Jewish vote. So we're now at a place where we're getting equal parity. And as the Democratic Party moves farther and farther to the left, more and more Jews are feeling disenfranchised and feeling unwelcome in their Democratic Party. And those are the people that we're picking up. And I have no doubt that as we have been making inroads in the last several elections, uh, in 2024, uh, we're going to continue to build on that, and we're going to get even stronger support in the Jewish community than we did in 2020. Mm -hmm. Interesting that uh, on top of that, we have Joe Biden now, this reporting tonight suggesting that uh, by this weekend, he may be out of the presidential race. He's facing pressure from Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi. Barack Obama hasn't directly said it, but allies of his are leaking word to the Washington Post. They want him out. The pressure's got intense, the questions about his health. But the Democrat Party covered a lot of this up for years and years. It was not until... Uh, literally three or four years until Donald Trump beat him in that debate that it was exposed for all the world to see. Yeah, for a long time, everybody is, people in the know in the Democratic Party and, and all of us, I mean, we knew that the emperor had no clothes, and you're right, they uh, uh, they spent a lot of time and effort to cover it up and to downplay it. Uh, but the reality is, is that anybody who has looked or watched Joe Biden at, over the years, uh, you know, he's not the same Joe Biden he was two years ago, three years ago, one year ago. Uh, the amount of decline that we're seeing is very troubling. And uh, I used to believe that he was going to survive this, but right now I think the dam is, is officially broke. I don't know if it's recoverable for him. So what happens next in your estimation? There's talk of a brokered or open convention, uh, Democratic National Convention in Chicago, where we don't really know who will emerge. There's some talk that Joe Biden will not endorse his vice own vice president, Kamala Harris. Uh, are you concerned as someone who supports the former president that a brand new Democratic ticket might actually do better than Biden, who's far behind right now, and it'll be a closer race. You know, I really don't. Uh, the reality is is that the likely option is going to be Kamala. But the fact is, is the, the messaging coming out of our convention this week uh, is unity. Uh, the one thing that we're going to see over the coming weeks uh, for the Democrats is the exact opposite. It's disunity and chaos. And that's just more and more weeks where President Trump will have an opportunity to campaign to the American people and to show the stark difference. And on so many issues right now, 
Uh, the Democrats are going to have to still run on the Biden record. They're not going to run against the Biden record, especially if it's Kamala. Uh, and I think with where the party is heading coming out of this convention, unified and excited, uh, I'm not worried about who the Democratic nominee is. Interesting. You can't be funny without perspective. Conversations that's been happening also with the NATO summit in Washington last week, uh, where you hail from. I mean, Joe Biden on the world stage, um, calling Z Zelensky Putin, <laughs> the missteps there. Now, uh, COVID, he's isolating himself again. You know, there's a question of who's running the country right now, and is he fit for office right now? The adversaries, and Israel is smacked out in the middle of trying to fight for its survival to not be wiped off the face of the earth, yet Joe Biden, um, has allowed Iran to be enriched. And that was one of the themes last night about national security, world security, and the appeasement of Iran and how they were bankrupt under Trump. And that's something, you know, that weighs on a lot of people's minds as well, the Jewish community, but also the wider community, that America just, we are supposed to be the leader to keep the world safe. And it, Donald Trump, they say up there, is, is the biggest deterrent. That yeah. man sitting in that box right now. You know, Donald Trump understands that a strong America brings peace to the world. Um, you know, we're, we're listening to Tucker Carlson right now uh, behind us giving his remarks. Obviously, you know, he wants to shrink America's platform around the world. Uh, I think that's a mistake. I don't think that's the vision that Donald Trump is going to have. I think he wants to, to bring back the wars. I mean, to end the wars around the world and to bring peace. But he understands to do it is you have to be strong. And that's exactly why he was able uh, to, you know, be very close to bring the Iranian regime to its knees. Uh, the Abraham you know, Accords. The Abraham Accords. Uh, a strong president who she in China and Putin uh, and the mullahs in Iran uh, and Kim Jong-un and, you know, the whole, the, 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 all the bad actors in the world know that America, there's going to be a new sheriff in town come mm -hmm. January. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that you see uh, Hamas seeming so willing to, to get a deal now, because they know that, you know, much like the Iranians realized um, uh, things were going to be very different under Ronald Reagan mm -hmm. than Jimmy Carter, Hamas realizes mm -hmm. that, you know, they need to get what they can get now, because once Donald Trump takes office, they're getting squad douche. I weigh <laughs> um, the hostages that are still in captivity. Uh, parents last night, if one came out and spoke, it, it, they're not getting the front and center attention from this president. No. There's not a peep. No, and, and remember on the debates, it, it, I mean, he insulted all those who have, who have lost their life by saying no Americans, you know, have died in, in uniform under my administration. I mean, it was just uh, awful to hear him say that. It doesn't totally disregard the memory of those who, who bravely gave their lives. Well, we certainly pray for the Israeli and American hostages who are still held by these terrorists, Hamas. Um, in Gaza, and uh, we appreciate your time and all the work that Thanks the Republican so Jewish Coalition is doing. Squad Incredible. Douche, is that Thank a technical you. term? <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it, Matt. Ed, thanks so much. We're going to take a quick